Brain tumors are the most common solid tumor and the second most common malignancy of childhood. About 3,700 cases of primary brain tumors are diagnosed each year worldwide. Now the etiology of pediatric brain tumors is not well defined. Molecular events associated with tumor genesis are not known. However male predominance is noted in medulloblastoma and ependymoma, whereas familial and hereditary syndromes account for only 5% of cases. Dot. Cranial exposure to ionizing radiation is associated with higher incidence of pediatric brain tumors. Now I will discuss the classification of primary brain tumors. Although more than 100 histological categories and subtypes have been described in WHO classification, but for clinical purpose brain tumors are divided into three main categories. Number one is infratentorial tumors. These include cerebellar astrocytoma usually pilocytic, medulloblastoma, ependymoma, brain stem glioma, and atypical teratoid or rhabdoid tumors. Number two is supratentorial tumors. This group include low-grade cerebral hemispheric astrocytoma, high-grade or malignant astrocytoma, mixed glioma, some primitive neuroectodermal tumors, oligodendroglioma, atypical teratoid or rhabdoid tumors, ependymoma, meningioma, choroid plexus tumors, and pineal parenchymal tumors. Now the third group is cell R or supracellar tumors. It includes craniopharyngioma, diencephalic astrocytoma, and germ cell tumors. Now friends I will discuss general clinical features of pediatric brain tumors. This depend on tumor location, tumor type, and age of the child. Signs and symptoms are due to raised intracranial pressure and focal brain dysfunction. Now the signs and symptoms of raised ICP include early morning headache, vomiting, mood changes, depressed or fluctuating conscious level. Infants may present with vomiting lethargy irritability macrocephaly widening of sutures tense bulging fontanels and sunset sign. Popliodema, sixth nerve palsy, Cushing triad of bradycardia hypertension and breathing irregularities, and upper motor neuron signs are also due to raised ICP. Now I will describe the signs and symptoms due to focal brain dysfunction depending upon the tumor location. Supratentorial tumors present with cortical focal neurological features. These include generalized seizures, spasticity, focal fits, deterioration of memory and concentration, disturbed behavior, speech disorders. Infants may present with hand preference. Now infratentorial tumors of cerebellar and fourth ventricular region present with ataxia, nystagmus, diplopia and blurred vision. Brain stem tumors present with facial weakness, dysphagia, ocular palsies, upward gaze palsy, spasticity, hemiparesis, hyperreflexia, clonus, altered conscious level, and cerebellar dysfunction. In midline tumors, optic pathway tumors present with decreased visual acuity, Marcus Gunn pupil, nystagmus, visual field defects, and disconjugate eye movements. Supracellar or third ventricular tumors present with neuroendocrine deficits such as Short stature or excessive growth, diabetes mellitus, galacteria, precocious or delayed puberty, and hypothyroidism. Midline tumors may present with diencephalic syndrome which include failure to thrive, emaciation, or increased appetite and euphoria. This usually occurs in infants. Pineal region tumors may present with paresis of upward gaze, pupillary dilatation which is reactive to accommodation but not to light, nystagmus on convergence, and eyelid retraction. Now the spinal cord tumors present with back pain in 50% cases, there may be long nerve tracts motor deficits such as gait disturbance, or weakness which could be flaccid or spastic. Other features of spinal cord tumors include sensory impairment below the level of tumor, resistance to trunk flexion, sphincter impairment, and spinal deformity. Now friends patients with meningeal metastatic disease from these primary brain tumors present with signs and symptoms similar to infratentorial tumors. Now friends for diagnosing brain tumors, complete history, physical and ophthalmological examination of patients should be done first. Planar contrast CT scan is useful in evaluating bony lesions calcification and investigating an unstable patient. However MRI with contrast is the best investigation in children. Tumor in the pituitary supracellar region optic path and infradentorial region are better delineated with MRI than CT scan. Other tests to be done include. 
bone scan, bone marrow aspirate and trephine biopsy, neuroendocrine evaluation, serum and CSF beta human chorionic gonadotropin and alpha fetoprotein. Now friends, pre-treatment workup of brain tumors include following tests. Complete blood counts, blood urea, serum creatinine, serum electrolytes, blood sugar, liver function tests, hepatitis B and C serology, and coagulation profile. Keep in mind that lumbar puncture is contraindicated in newly diagnosed hydrocephalus secondary to CSF flow obstruction, or in patients with infratentorial tumors. Lumbar puncture in these patients may lead to brain herniation and death. Now treatment options for brain tumors in children are surgery, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy. The purpose of neurosurgical intervention is threefold. First to provide tissue biopsy. Second to attain maximum tumor removal with fewest neurological sequel. And third to relieve associated raised intracranial pressure due to CSF flow obstruction. Dexamethasome should be given preoperatively as it significantly reduces edema and focal symptoms. In the case of moderate to severe hydrocephalus ventriculostomy can decrease intracranial pressure. For deep-seated midline tumors sterostatic biopsy should be done. Radiotherapy and chemotherapy also play an important role in the treatment of pediatric brain tumors. Pediatric brain tumors are responsible for chronic complications, so long-term follow-up is required. One half of the survivors experience chronic problems due to the direct result of treatment. The complications include focal motor and sensory deficit, seizures, neurocognitive deficits such as developmental delay, regression or learning disability, neuroendocrine abnormalities resulting in growth failure, hypothyroidism, delayed, absent, or precocious puberty. There is also significant risk of secondary malignancies. Now friends I will briefly discuss the specific features of some important pediatric brain tumors. Astrocytoma account for 40% of brain tumors in children. Juvenile pilocytic astrocytoma is WHO grade 1 tumor. It is usually located in cerebellar hemisphere, hypothalamus, third ventricle, optic nerve and chiasmal region. It has an indolent course and low metastatic potential. Fibrillary infiltrating astrocytoma is a WHO grade 2 tumor. In this there is diffuse infiltration of tumor cells among normal neural tissue. Its location is also infratentorial cerebellar region. But it has potential for an anaplastic progression. Both these tumors usually present with 3 to 6 months history of limb ataxia, secondary headache and vomiting. Imaging studies in juvenile pilocytic astrocytoma reveal a contrast-enhancing nodule within the wall of a cystic lesion. Histology shows bundles of compact fibrillary tissue interspersed with loose microcystic spongy areas. Rosenthal fibers are the condensed masses of glial filaments in the compact zone. In fibrillary infiltrating astrocytoma MRI shows lack of enhancement with contrast. Histology reveals increased cellularity compared with normal brain parenchyma, few meiotic figures, nuclear pleomorphism and microcysts. Treatment of these low-grade astrocytomas include surgery. Complete resection has 80 to 100% survival, and partial resection has 50 to 95% survival. Radiotherapy to tumor bed is given on a daily schedule basis for six weeks. Chemotherapy drugs includes carboplatin, vincristin, vinblastin, temozolomide, lomustin, and perparbazine. High-grade astrocytomas account for 7 to 10 percent of brain tumors. Anaplastic astrocytoma is WHO grade 3 tumor and is located supratentorially. Histology shows increased cellularity, cellular and nuclear atypia, mitosis, and microvascular proliferation. Glioblastoma multiform is WHO grade 4 tumor and is also found in supratentorial region. Histology shows dense cellularity, high meiotic index, microvascular proliferation, and foci of tumor necrosis. Overexpression of P53 gene is a poor prognostic factor. Ependymoma is a WHO grade 2 tumor, and account for 10% of childhood brain tumors. 
70% occurs in fratentorial posterior fossa with cerebellopontine predilection. Mean age is 6 years and there is male predominance. Child presents with history of 2 to 5 months of unsteadiness, headache, vomiting, double vision, and facial asymmetry. MRI shows a well-circumscribed mass of variable enhancement, containing cystic areas and calcification. Histology reveal paravascular pseudo-rosettes, ependymal rosettes, and non-palisading foci of necrosis. Survival in totally resected tumor is more than 75%. Anaplastic and myxopapillary ependymomas are rare in children. Choroid plexus tumors account for 24% of childhood CNS tumors. Mostly occurs in infants younger than one year of age, and account for 10 to 20% of CNS tumors in infancy. These are located supratentorially in lateral ventricles and present with signs and symptoms of raised ICP. Choroid plexus papilloma is a WHO grade 1 tumor and choroid plexus carcinoma is grade 3 tumor. Lee from any syndrome and simian virus 40 may play etiological role. Immunopositivity for transthyroidin may be present. Embryonal tumors are primitive neuroectodermal tumors are the most common malignant CNS tumors. Medulloblastoma account for 90% of the embryonal tumors. Its location is infratentorial cerebellar midline vermis. It disseminate to neuroaxis and beyond. There is male predominance and mean age is 5 to 7 years. Child presents with 2 to 3 months history of headache, vomiting, truncal ataxia, dysmetria, nystagmus, and dysarthria. Neuroimaging shows heterogeneous or homogeneous enhancing midline fourth ventricular mass. It may be disseminated. Histology reveal monomorphic sheets of indifferentiated small blue round cells. Neuronal differentiation may form Homer right rosettes. For treatment of medulloblastoma three things should be considered. First age of the child. Second is staging of tumor. M0 is no dissemination, M greater than 0 is dissemination present, and M1 is positive CSF cytology. Third thing to consider is the risk assessment. Standard risk means no residual disease after surgery and M0, while high risk is gross residual disease after surgery and M greater than 0 or M1. So, child less than 3 year age, are treated with surgery and chemotherapy. In these radiotherapy has no role. Child more than 3 year age plus standard risk are treated with surgery, tumor bed radiotherapy with dose of 50 to 55 and craniospinal irradiation with dose of 24, plus high dose chemotherapy. While children more than 3 years age plus high risk are treated same as above except the craniospinal irradiation with dose of 36 is given. Survival is 60 to 85 percent, in infants it is about 20 to 70 percent. Poor prognostic factors are age less than 4 years, M greater than 0 or M1 stage, and gross residual disease after resection. Pineal parenchymal tumors are rare and survival is about 70%. Craniopharyngioma is a WHO grade 1 tumor and account for 7 to 10% of CNS tumors. It is located at supracellar region and is minimally invasive. Child present with significant hypopituitarism, growth failure and visual loss. MRI shows a solid tumor with cystic structures containing fluid. CT scan may show calcification. It is treated with surgery and radiotherapy. Others rare tumors are germ cell tumors, peak age is 10 to 12 years with male predominance. In these serum alpha fetoprotein and beta human chorionic gonadotropin are increased. Brain stem tumors account for 10 to 15 percent of CNS tumors. These are of four types. Focal, dorsally exophytic, cervico medullary, and diffuse intrinsic tumors. In diffuse type mortality is greater than 90%. Now the brain tumors which metastasize extranorally are medulloblastoma, other embryonal tumors, ependymoma, and malignant glioma.